for a second. I glanced. I have pushed us live. We are live on the Twitches. Uh oh. Now, how do I turn it off? <laughs> now you can leave it on. It's fine. I don't want to leave it on. <laughs> there we go. Just click it again. Okay. This is better. Yeah. This is better than whatever grandma's house I was in before. I like my collection. I know you can't I see like my collection, collection with the way my desk is situated. Oh, did I show the newest little item to my collection? No, show us. I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> I got my Master oh, Morpher. Oh. Another That's Morpher. So awesome. Yes, but this one, this one is the Master Morpher, though. The way that I thought that was a can of cat food at first. <laughs> Dino Thunder, power up! <laughs> so that's, ooh, oh it God. lights up. That's awesome. Shiny. Wait, did it say something too? Yeah, it, it has sounds and talks. Um, short version, so cool. Tommy has been like six, seven different uh, versions of a ranger at one time or another. And they came up with a canon reason for him to be able to switch between all of his alternate forms on the fly. Master Morpher. Okay. So it literally has a different coin for every one of his different personas. And so, yeah. That's awesome. Where's Apollo? Apollo's not coming. Oh. He messaged me. I know. And you know what? We have like. I don't even know what the topic is. <laughs> you might find it interesting. I like it. Um, Actually, it's not another FMK, is it? No, 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 that's next month. Next month is the big giant wheel. I've spent so much time on it, so it's happening. Okay, I'm taking remind me to remove the December patron chat poll from our scheduled posts, then seeing as it's oh. already decided. Oh, and by the way, the shirt I'm wearing was the one I was gonna wear for Halloween, but I in the 11th hour changed my mind and wore, uh, wore my Spider Man. No, it's uh, a bunch of horror movie monsters oh, doing The Last the Supper. We got Pinhead, Freddy Krueger, <laughs> Hannibal Lecter, Ghostface, uh, Captain Spaulding. No, that's Hannibal I mean, Lecter. I knew that's it was that's The Candyman. Last Supper, but the one in the middle from this distance looks like Megamind. It does. Kind it of totally like does. With the head. <laughs> so, no, I this was what I was going to wear, uh, like I said, for the Halloween episode, and then oh. I ended up doing my Spider-Man costume instead, so. Plus, I figure it's still kind of on brand. They're all sitting down to a meal together. I love it. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving horror style. Oh, it's a Mary. Oh, it's a Mary. Now, we literally just a couple of minutes ago got uh, done with uh, the Buster side of our Ghostbuster match. We lost. But it's the first time, and I can't remember how long, that I took an L with a smile on my face. Because this was still just a hell of a match. And, dude, we... Oh man, we were this freaking close. Because <laughs> it's about the journey and not the destination. I literally posted in the uh, Discord in our uh, the EGBL Discord server the little uh, a GIF of the little scene from the first Fast and Furious with Brian. Like, dude, I almost had you. Oh my god, right. I love those movies. I just binged all of them. <laughs> Do we want to go with just the four of us or? Who did you have in mind? I mean, I've got a little group of people who are currently online that might be willing to switch over. Or one of them win because Win's an actual patron too. <laughs> no, <laughs> Win's at work. Oh, Win's at work. She work. miss you, Win. Yeah, bring someone else. I like all, all, all point of views for this one. Yeah. I'm going to be genuinely surprised if we all don't agree, but we'll see. That's why I was I was like, man, Paul is not here to disagree slightly with things. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I didn't get to tell my funny story. We're, uh, we're not going live yet, right? Like We not have been, yeah. No, I mean, like, we're not yeah. recording. No, we're not recording, but we are live on Twitch. Well, that yeah, I'm different. not worried about that. Okay. But, you know, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I got a, I got a message. I'll be right back.
Uh, that's fine. I'm sorry, Twitch stream. Cool. He's like, you know, I was just thinking that too. As far as stage name goes, that's pretty. His exact words were, "That's pretty baller." <laughs> <laughs> so how like far we've fallen. Yeah. The the name change yeah. thing. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm not allowed. I, I apparently it raised concerns with having Daddy in my <laughs> handle. It's not like it's Daddy that night. Like <laughs> so he he asked me if there was something I could I could compromise with, and I came up with the idea of DB Knight. Oh. And like he, his his reply was that was actually a pretty good stage name, DB Knight. Except you're not pluming, you're acting. Huh? <laughs> oh, and gnome de plume. It's like, it's like pluming. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I know that phrase, but I don't yeah. know what it means. Well, it's it's French for like I th I can't think it's like a writing al alias. A pen name. A pen name. Yeah, a name of pen, but like. You're not penning anything. That's what I'm saying. It's like for writers normally they would say nom de plume, but you're. The only reason uh, I know it is because it was a lyric in the. Uh, uh, in Aladdin Steph song. Song from Aladdin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I bet he is a nom de plume. There he is. <laughs> Riff raff, straight rat. Uh, nobody is able to join tonight, so. Whatever. Let's Fine, just we don't need go. Them. <laughs> I'm just gonna bite my lip because the joke that's coming to my head right now is so bad, so very, very bad. <laughs> mm. All right, okay. <laughs> what? My sister. <laughs> oh, thanks just for the hell of it, seven. Oh, I love that username. Yeah. That's so funny. I just imagine oh, it's a cat. Oh, non <laughs> I only work for Halibut. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's actually get this thing started. Are you recording, my dear? No. Or do you not care anymore? No? Okay. <laughs> no, I am I, I am now. <laughs> All right. Silencio. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Two Girls, One Ship, the podcast where we analyze, rate, and review all that the world of video game romances has to offer. I'm Genesis, the girl who started a new Baldur's Gate 3 run, but I'm role-playing it out with a group of three other friends as a Mass Effect run. We have Morinth, the Drow Sorcerer, Conrad Werner, the human bard, Nihilus, the dragonborn fighter, and Chakwas, the human cleric. It's amazing. I love it. Aren't you going to miss, like, playing with the companions in the game, though? Yeah, but I think it's more the fun, like, this is all, like, we've the people who are all playing have all done multiple runs, so it's kind of just a let's see how much shenaniganery we can get up to in one run. That's fair, I guess. Uh, we had really different weeks. <laughs> I'm Vervada, the girl who like 
questions my sexuality even more now that I've watched Blue Eye Samurai. Because, <laughs> oh my God, something LGBT has happened to me. <laughs> you guys need to watch that show if you haven't. Please, please renew it for season two. Netflix. Welcome. Welcome to the family. <laughs> um. I'm, my sister and I joke that we're like the gayest straight people. I don't even know if I qualify as straight because I think demisexual doesn't. I don't know. I've only been with me. Whatever. I don't care. I am what I am. Um, who do you think I'm playing out of those four people? Uh, wait, okay, so it was Chakwas. It was... Uh, Morinth, Conrad, Nihilus, and Chakwas. You're playing Morinth. Nope. Nihilus? Nope. Wow, shit. I'm bad at this. You're not Chakwas, are you? Nope. Wow, okay. <laughs> I failed that one. <laughs> you totally failed. I was like, I want to play a bard. And then it came up like the only person who tells stories and weaves tales about people in it is Conrad. And so I was like, I'll play as Conrad Werner. I can't believe you're playing as Conrad Werner. But that makes sense that he'd be a bard. I love being a bard. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. All right, but before we tangent too Wait, much further. One Wait, more what? tangent. Kay. What instrument does Connor? Or Conrad, sorry, play. Um, I started with the violin because I just fell in love with it really quick. Did you know that when you're selecting the bard, if you select through all the different um, instruments, it plays down by the river in that instrument, so that way you can listen to it. So fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay, right. But before we tangent even further... <laughs> Let's open up the room. Hello, patrons. Daddy Bat Knight, or is it now DB Knight? Hello there, and I'll answer to either one. All right. And Muffiny Cake. Hi. Hi. AKA did Twin to V. Yes. And did you text Eileen for me last week uh, about how her bullshit needs to be called out for pushing my episode back to the very end of the year? Yeah, I think we did call her out on that. I think she actually felt bad about it, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I hope she did. I'm just kidding. She better. I love you, Eileen. <laughs> We've had so many stories in between then and now that it kind of blends together. But she's, she's had an interesting week, too. <laughs> Ooh. Interesting. Her snake might, might be a her, her snake actually might be Wait, a man. You're in the chat. My beautiful Eileen. <laughs> oh no. Hi Eileen. <laughs> Yay. Eileen backwards. <laughs> mm. Well, we'll have words at the end of the year. But they will be fun words about Iron Bowl. But tonight, we will be having probably not so fun words about our patron topic for the night, which is sexy versus toxic. Where is the line? Avi, this came out of your brain. What were you thinking? Okay. Um, I have so many thoughts on this, but um, what I was thinking of was when you're telling a story, I mean, like, we don't have to necessarily stick with video game romance in this. We can just talk about romance stories in general. But I was thinking of, like, what makes something sexy versus toxic? Like, some toxicity we have tolerance for in our romance stories. Like, for instance, in romance novels, there's, like, a ton of problematic tropes, specifically when there is a female main character a lot of the times there's usually like a reverse harem as they call it. And like their enemies to lovers sometimes push the boundary a little too far in these romance novels. And like, they literally have the woman like beaten and in chains and like horrible things happen to her. And then she eventually falls in love and, and I, people eat that shit up. And I would say, Hey, that's pretty toxic. <laughs> like, I don't know if we really want that in a story, but um, you know, so I guess that there is a very fine line between what can be sexy and what can be toxic, especially because all of this is art. And it's up to the viewer, reader, player, whatever, to decide for themselves in, like, to a point, though, because there are things that are um, just definitively bad. I guess for me, like, 
when I was thinking about this, I was thinking one of the things that I really liked that challenged this for me was Astarian's two endings in mm. Baldur's Gate 3, Ascended versus Unascended. One of them is undoubtedly toxic and yet people love it. So it's like, what amount of toxicity do we tolerate personally? What do we prefer to see? Would we rather see more healthy relationships? Do we have any examples? Just things like that. That's what I was thinking of. Okay. Fat night muffin. Do you go ahead and unmute you guys? Can, it's just just the four of us tonight. Do either of you have any instant thoughts about that? You want to go fat night? Ladies first. Okay. Um, yeah. So instantly, it's not a video game, but I think we've all seen this movie, The Notebook, classically hailed as like a beautiful romance story. However, this man climbed. What is that called? A Ferris wheel? There we go. I don't know why that word flew out of my head. He climbed a Ferris wheel and literally she was on a date with another man and he said he would kill himself if she said she wouldn't go out with him. And everybody swooned. But why? <laughs> That's actually insane. It's actually so insane. Not only that, but they fought a lot. And that's also kind of not a super good sign of a healthy relationship. So I feel like that entire movie represents a lot of toxic Hollywood romance tropes that honestly, there, there are some video games I can probably think of that have a lot of that in there too. But that was the first thought that came into my head was that movie. None of that was sexy. It was all toxic in my opinion. Well, my brain instantly went to, you said, you know, and everybody swooned. I don't know why. I went, I know exactly why, because it was Ryan Gosling. Yeah. It, it could be, it could be anybody. It, uh, to me, I guess that's the thing about toxic versus sexy is a lot of that's culturally, like what we as a culture decide is okay. And a lot of times hot people get away with stuff that, you know, culturally hot people, because I mean, he, Maybe Ryan Gosling caught everywhere. I don't know. I'm not sure. But let's just say that's in America that everybody, even men, like love him. So apparently it's okay if he decides to climb a Ferris wheel and threaten suicide for a date. I mean, I have a running gag in my own like conversations with coworkers and whatnot. I refer to the power of pretty because anything you know, any 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 venture you attempt to do tends to go a little smoother if you're pretty. With the possible exception of like, I guess, a law degree, but you know. Uh but then again, L Wood, so um Yeah. Also called pretty privilege. Yeah. What? Like it's hard. I'm sorry? I said what? Like it's hard? You said L Wood. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Could couldn't stop it. <laughs> I didn't catch a movie what? reference. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> like getting yeah. into Harvard is hard yeah. or something. <laughs> um, when you were, talked about the notebook, I was just thinking like another reason I think because my my thought was like I'm per forever baffled why people will like something so staunchly that is so adamant in its shittiness, you know, like for the notebook, I think people confuse the uh, confuse like true passion with fighting just because they're yelling at each other and then having sex does not mean that they have a whirlwind romance, you know, but mm -hmm. that's like a cheating way to create friction and then resolve it fakely using sex. But when in the real world does that work long term? Like they're shown to have this very long term relationship to the point where he's now reading her diary or his own diary. I can't remember. I think it's hers to her when she has Alzheimer's in a nursing home. And that's like how she remembers him every time. Yeah. So like, I don't know. It's just, it's hard for me to see that and be like, why do people want to emulate this? Because another one that flew into my head is Twilight, obviously. Yeah. People are rabid about Twilight. And talking. It's a big one. Toxic. <sighs> Not yeah, sexy. it's super toxic and there's nothing sexy about it because like, I don't know, maybe that's my personality coming into play being as a self-identified demisexual. Like I, I cannot physically see any kind of attraction in them because of their personalities, because of the way they're treating Bella and also the way Bella's allowing herself to be treated and putting herself like she's just so she weakens herself so much. It's the whole thing is gross. 
that also brings up the very toxic yet for some reason very much heralded as like sexy or at least maybe back in the day not so much now but the infantilized woman so like edward's way older than her obviously he's in the teens and he's been 17 for a very long time um so it's it's the woman who it's it's that and it's also like i see this a lot i remember in star trek growing up watching original star trek um captain kirk would often get with like the green babes green alien babes but they would be like not super familiar with the customs of the people from earth and that their culture or language barrier infantilizes them and that was like a huge trope also just like men seeing this like poor helpless woman that is com needs to be completely dependent on them so that's a big one also yeah but then there's also that's the um what is that book trope that i see a lot on the internet where oh no there's only one bed or like enemies to lovers oh, yeah. type tavern <laughs> that's that's on the line sometimes enemies to lovers it can definitely be on the line and yeah. still lovers is on the line and then like the the forced um proximity one mm -hmm. yeah where that's the one i couldn't remember i was just like oh no there's only one that's usually how castle. they go from enemies <laughs> yeah. to lovers is the forced yeah. proximity like that's the number one indicator for attraction period is how how often do you hang out with them and see them Beauty probably gonna the get beast. Hmm? oh yeah Beauty and the beast <laughs> yeah well I guess that that's my real question that I think about. I don't know if there's a right answer all of the time. I think that it bleeds into one another. Our stories are sexy and toxic sometimes, but they are fiction. I think the problem lies in like how much responsibility does art have in its message that, because I mean, even though everyone's responsible for their own interpretation of the art, there is always themes, especially in narrative works that are just there and there isn't another interpretation. It's just, that is what the story is about, you know? Otherwise we, we wouldn't know what any story is about because we all would just make up what it means to ourselves. So it's like when we have, especially with video game romances, cause we have, like Jen and I have both talked to people and read research, lots of research on how important video game research is to people's sexual identity awakenings, like informing their own idea of their self and what they find attractive. And it's also modeling relationships to them, good and bad. And so it's like, it it might, that's why I think it's, it's so difficult to have something. And I can't think of a, a video game romance that is entirely bad, but it's also I like- can. Oh, you can. I bet. I bet mm -hmm. I'll agree the second you say it. But it's like you know, at what point? Where does the line go from like artists to the viewer? And I don't know. It's just so difficult. I'm not even sure if I'm getting my point across. But it's like there's. It's, I think about this all the time lately because of Baldur's Gate. Because I see people defending certain choices in this game as good and like, oh, there's no bad way to play it. But there really is. It's just. You, you can role play and be like, I want to be the bad person in this playthrough. But like these people do these weird, like cognitive dissonance exercises trying to justify their choice when it's like, no, it's tell the narrative's telling you it's bad. So it's not, it's toxic, you know, <laughs> but it also is sexy. So the relationship that I think is totally toxic and should not happen unless you're doing it just for the save scum because you want to experience it is Jack and Shepard. Specifically in the Renafuck where you do the renegade option of, yeah, dude, let's go. You, you the scene itself is sexy. It was a good sex scene for me. But then everything completely shuts down. She shuts down. Her walls are most likely now permanently up. And, you know, there's no character growth and development. It's sexy, but extremely toxic and is the wrong choice. I also loved all of your faces when I said Jack and Shepard. You guys are like, what? <laughs> oh, no, I knew immediately you were about Renegade yeah. one. Well, the like, timing yeah. for you saying that with me in particular was funny, but I'll get to that later. 
when we're doing shout outs and whatnot. The timing mm -hmm. is really funny. There's actually a really similar situation you can get into with Astari in, in Baldur's Gate 3 in Act 2, which, spoiler alert, everybody, if we didn't play it already, like, you can, when he confesses to you that he does not want he's not sure if he ever wants to have sex again. And at this moment in time, he is not comfortable with it. You can manipulate him into having sex anyway, like mm -hmm. pressure him and he will. But then in the middle of the night, he will wake up and he'll break up with you and tell you, like, he'll be like, you know what, actually you suck. And I am not okay with this. And I love that he stood up for himself, but it's like, so that was really refreshing to see. I did not pressure him. I had to watch that video on YouTube, but it's like that right there, that is the whole Thing that's not that specific example, but Starian specifically, like doing that to him and then ascending him and everyone frothing at the mouth, throwing their necks at him first for his ascended self because of his like dom behavior. And like, I'm sure the sex scene is animated great. I'm sure it's super, super hot, but it's extremely toxic. And people like will flip over and try to justify it. But it's like, at the end of the day, you guys messed up. You made him into a monster that he was trying to avoid. And he doesn't love you anymore. And now your relationship is super, super fucked. So good job for that. And narratively, that is bad. That's a bad decision. And the writers even said they want you to feel bad about it. So I'm thinking, like, this that's the line I guess I'm thinking of is really determined by the player of what's sexy, what's toxic. Because you can, in games, push it into toxic territory for your own self-gratification, especially with games like this that have scenes to watch. Mm -hmm. It's like you literally just screwed his narrative development, totally did not give a shit about his personality for the sake of you getting a hot sex scene, which you get a very beautiful one if you don't ascend him. So personally, I think you win both times. You don't ascend him and you get a gorgeous sex scene. But like, I don't know. It's interesting that, I mean, I'm, I'm glad they have the choice in that game to do that and in other games like with Jack, but they punish you for it. That's the point. It's like, that is toxic. The game's telling you it is. You cannot romance Jack after that point. So clearly that was you a You can't mistake. even talk to her. She tells you to fuck off. You can't yeah. talk to her anymore. So it's like, what, are people out there genuinely thinking like, worth it, it's a fake character, whatever, you know? I could see that if your main intention wasn't to romance Jack and you were just there for the lay. Hot girl, want to bang. When really I'm going for Miranda. Yeah. I personally think Jack's hotter in ME3. <laughs> than Miranda? Yeah. Because she's, you know, she's stepped into her own power more too. Like mm -hmm. more comfortable with her own mind and everything again. More healed. But I guess Vega too could be, you know, cause he's super flirty and everything, but that, that scene, like I didn't personally do it, but I watched it on YouTube and after you guys did the episode and honestly, like that scene was like really disturbing. <laughs> like he was definitely like sexually assaulted and he was not comfortable with it. The only thing he was comfortable with was just the light flirting and the, you know, nicknames and that was it. And mm -hmm. she, female shepherd kind of stepped out of, you know, female shepherd's character in general. It felt very, it felt very out of pocket, honestly. It was very foreign, like, especially for my femme shep because she was a paragon, but she would never do that. I don't know who's, who's femme shep out there would do that, but it just felt very icky, not sexy mm -hmm. at all. It, but I was like, somebody, somebody wrote this and it, it felt like their intention was for it to be like, ooh, role reversal, like super sexy, but it was just icky. But it's the thing is, like, narratively, it punishes you for that one, too, because you don't get to romance Vega after that, and he, like, distinctly True. tells you in the morning, like, actually, this was a mistake, you know, and yeah. I just, at what point do we just have media illiteracy where you can't understand the message being, like, billboarded in front of you by the game, being like, you messed up, look what you've done, because you wanted to bang a hot guy, like, it's, it's a weird commentary because it's like, on one hand, I, I don't play like this. I'm, maybe there are people out there who do. And if you do, feel free to write what you think about this. Because, like, I can't get into the headspace of just being like, hey, 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 no consequences. All these people are fake. I'm just going to do whatever. Like, I don't do that at all. Like, I look at them as real people. And I'm like, I can't, I can't hurt Vega like that. 
I don't like him like that anyway, because Garrus exists. But you know, if he didn't, I was still like, that would hurt. that would be horrible to hear that. I would immediately reload. But speaking of Garrus, also like, just for a moment, because I know we're all mega Garrus lovers here. But for a moment, just humor me. If Garrus was a human when you first meet him, and he's super vigilante, would wouldn't he be a little less attractive and it would be more like into maybe he would have a punisher tattoo in real life kind of you know what i mean imagine if he was a human <laughs> like it would it would be less i think because he's not human that it worked for him and obviously he kind of he gets better and comes out of his shell and a little less his care face. The vigilante stuff yeah exactly his care of face. but i'm thinking if he was a human it probably wouldn't have played that well I think for me personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't have liked him as much as I obviously do. Garrus so forever. I did a I did a bro run where obviously Garrus is not a romance option, and so I was like, this is my opportunity to make Garrus his ultimate renegade. And so I did all of the wrong choices for him. I let him kill Doctor Salian. I let him snipe. Uh, what's what's his face? The dude in ME2. I let him kill him. I let him stomp, or I let him shoot Harkin. I did all of the bad things that makes Garrus like really go into that dark headspace and stay there. And then by the end of the game, I was just like, "Yeah, you're not my Garrus. I I don't I don't like this guy as much." He didn't even feel like my bro's best friend, which normally by the end of the game, we totally are. Um, it's just, yeah. Uh, also, I need to call out what Just for the Halibut said in chat, um, going off of the conversation that we were having earlier. Empowerment isn't women turning the same shitty behavior towards men. And yes, that is is the level of feminism that I am in love with. Um, it is not about, like, oh, women need to rise by smashing down the men. No, we just all need to be at the same level of equality. That's, that's what I believe in. And so seeing that in chat is amazing. And yeah, I don't like it when the, like, well, okay. I can't say I don't like reverse harem because that's definitely one of the things I love to read. Um, but only when it's done well and done right. Okay. Um, but it's, it's not, it, to me, it really has to be about women having their own power and owning the, their own power, but not having stolen it from someone else or, you know, having some, unequal power balance with the men around them um, or the other women around them either so equality I think the thing is like we can't say like this trope is bad this trope is good this storytelling device is bad etc like it really depends on how it's framed you can have things told in two different ways but basically the same story otherwise and it mean vastly different things just from context and the tone all those sorts of things so it's like there are ways to tell the story that make it work and make it not toxic but make it sexy or you could make it really toxic like it really just depends on how it's framed which is why it's like games it's interesting because a lot of the negative plot points aren't necessarily framed negatively. It's kind of neutral because you're the player, you're the center of the universe. So it's like, even though it's a mistake to renegade sleep with Jack and she'll tell you it's a mistake, you're fine. Like you're just like, whatever. Okay. My, my, the rest of my game really isn't affected. So it's not negative. It's just the thing that happened, but that's when it comes, that's when you really need to start using your like critical thinking skills <laughs> and just see what the characters are saying. Like it's, it's not enough to just be like, well, I can still defeat the Reapers or I can still defeat the collectors, I guess, of Mass Effect 2. So I guess it really wasn't that bad. It's like, well, that's why you then think of these characters as people instead. But in like, it happens a lot in books 
and TV shows where it's like it can be framed one way and it's fine. Like, okay, I don't know if this is going to be a hot take, but everyone, for, for, for instance, like with Twilight, like that was everyone's favorite vampire thing when we were teenagers. But my favorite vampire thing, same with my sister, which happened around the same time that Twilight movie started coming out, was True Blood. And it's like, on the surface, you have these two similar stories in one way, because it's like, you have Bella is special because Ed, Edward can't hear her thoughts, and he's a vampire and she's not. Then we have True Blood, where Sookie thinks Bill is special because she can't hear his thoughts. I don't know why mind readings always <laughs> involved vampires too, <laughs> but like, and the difference is Bella is on this like pedestal. Like he's the predator. He has all the power. He can read thoughts normally. She's just a normal ass human who gets sucked into this whole thing and ends up, you know, pregnant and married and dead by 18 undead, I guess. But like Suki, not that at all. She's a full grown adult. She has her own house. She does have powers in her own abilities that are apart from the vampires. She also has power over the vampires because she can just rescind the invitation into her house. Whereas Edward freaking sneaks into Bella's room every night through her junior and senior year or whatever. How I don't remember whatever high school. Remember, she's a child, actually, an actual child. So it's like a completely well, different power dynamic, even though the relationship on the surface is very similar because it's framed differently. So I like True Blood better. Everyone much should watch True Blood. Spooky was in her early 20s still living at her grandmother's house when the show started. Well, she has her own house after her grandmother dies. Yeah, I know, but it's not. I think it's really sweet that she lives with her grandma. First of all, it's there's nothing wrong That's with cute. living with her grandma. Like, mm -hmm. she has a full-time job. She's got her own money. Her grandma is not, like, the authority figure over her. They're much more like friends because Sookie is a grown-ass adult. Like, mm -hmm. she can do whatever she wants. And she makes a conscious choice to go to Bill and, like, have sex with him. Whereas Bella's kind of coerced into it. I don't know. The whole Sorry, my, my tangent was, like, is Jason older than Sookie? Jason, yeah, he's the older brother. Okay, he's the older brother. Okay. Yeah. No, um, I'm not saying True Blood is perfect because it's definitely not. But um, like like Jason and um that girl who got him addicted to V, the, the vampire blood. I can't remember her name. Huge toxic relationship, horrible. Like, but right. they could not frame it's not it. Exactly as a good, a good relationship. relationship now that he's with, with the Were Panther. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I'm at. <laughs> It gets it gets wild. Um, no, but the thing is, like, that's the difference. It's like that bad relationship. They frame it as bad. Like Jason usually gets into bad relationships, but it's never painted as like this ideal, this beautiful, passionate thing that you should end up with them. And oh, despite all their problems, they still lived happily ever after. Yeah, because he killed her and locked her up, Bella. So, but like Suki at the end. I like Foyton. She's don't too. spoil the ending for him. He's currently watching True Blood. Sorry. Anyway, you'll see. It's good. I like Hoyt and Jessica. Yeah, yes. they start off real cute. I love them. Oh, don't don't tell the me. The way that. you just said that. Oh, yeah. Sorry, no. I think they're really cute. I really liked their relationship. I heard what you said. They started <laughs> really cute. <laughs> no, but they did. I I mean, I'm not Wait, saying his, anything. Mm, I don't, now I need to remember his. Bad things happen to Jessica yet by season three. I don't remember. No, because all that ha all that happened so far where I'm at is uh, uh, Hoyt let his mom get in his ear. So mm. the two oh, the separate, red heels line. She I up, remember. <laughs> she ends up flirting with uh, uh, dude man's brother, the shapeshifter. His name is escaping me at the moment. Sam uh, or Alcide? Sam. Yeah, Sam Merlot. I, 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 uh, anyway, Sam's brother ends up flirting with Jessica for a little bit while Hoyt ends up dating Bernadette from the Big Bang Theory. And uh, then he, by the end of the, I just finished that season. And so at the end of it, Hoyt has decided uh, he and Jessica are going to move in together. I think he even proposed. And uh, yeah, which is funny to me because that season started with uh, Bill proposing to Sookie 
And then by the end of it, she rescinds all the invitations and tells everybody to F off. And she doesn't want anything to do with any of them. And yeah. So far, my favorite character in this movie or in this show is uh, the the werewolf guy. Uh, I'll see. Yeah, him. So far, he's my favorite character. But as far as favorite couple, it's uh, Jessica and Hoyt. Yeah. Kerbo's okay. great. There's a plethora of hot people in good relationships and bad relationships. But like I said, it's it's that's the main difference for me is when like, well, that's just about the narrative. Like I said, I'm really thinking more of like the in the person participating or viewing or reading the media or art or whatever like there is art though that does put out a message like twilight where it's like okay this is mostly shitty of a relationship like i wouldn't want this in real life you can still get ad entertainment value from it i would not take relationship advice from stephanie myers but i maybe you can be entertained by that that's fine but it's it really there's the story framing it and then there is how you can interpret it to a point once again like i said narrative things especially there are themes there are tropes there are ways to analyze it we do it every week with the characters there's just simple truths about some of them that you should accept you a star in romance with people just stop ascending him Myers four book abstinence lecture uh. No. I read, I read, mm. um, what was that book she wrote about like the people the with the eyes? The host. The host. That actually wasn't half bad. No, I, I liked that bad. one. Yeah. Um, all right. Before I go off on a tangent about the things that I actually do enjoy about Twilight, uh, I think this is a good spot for us to take our mid-break where we will listen to sponsors of the show, thank our patrons, and, well, not share any fun facts. Unless maybe I decide to say why I still like Twilight a little bit. Mid-break dance. I don't know what we're dancing to tonight other than, like, chaotically raving. I feel like that's what this episode has been. Okay. Chaotic rave. Let's go. <laughs> oh, okay. Got the one dance move. So, uh, yeah, I'm dancing. Um, okay. So, we do have a new review to read out, but I'm gonna hold it for next week, uh, just so that way the person who left it can hear it because not everybody listens to patron chats, and so I want it to be heard on the main feed. So, also, I want to say thank you for getting us to 159 uh, ratings on Spotify. We are so close. So close. I can feel it. Don't stop. Keep giving them. Keep giving those ratings. <laughs> I just see Daddy Bat and I, like, holding the comment in. Raising. I'll do it for you. Okay. <clears throat> Also, huge shout, huge shout out to our newest patron, Just for the Halibut, who is also here with us here tonight in the Twitch chat. Thank you so much for showing up here tonight and for becoming our newest patron. And of course, we shout out all of our lovely, lovely patrons in the middle of the show. So all my love and huge hearts, major thank you to Toasty and Apollo. Becky and Daddy Bat Knight, Mystios and Muffiny Cake, Mackenzie and Wynn. Yes, thank you. Repeating my message of we would love to see your faces or avatars or whatever on our patron chat. So it'd be super fun. We want to hear you talk. Yes. I mean, especially if you pay for the privilege, you might as well. If if right. a Friday ever works out for you. Um, for sure. We love having people here. It's the whole point of the patron chat. It's to get your voices and your ideas on the topics heard. And if you can't support us at that level, we totally get it. You can also join our Patreon for only a dollar a month, which ends up being a quarter per episode. Like, come on now. That's totally worth it. 
And it also unlocks the ad-free versions of the show. You can download them directly from Patreon. And you also get to vote on the topics that we talk about at the end of the month. Um, I think that that part of it is really cool. And it, so it means that you get at least a say in what we say at the end of the month. So, oh, and again, the reminder that you can't search for us. You have to type out the full worded link of patreon.com slash T-W-O-G-I-R-L-S-O-N-E-S-H-I-P. Two girls, one ship. Type it all out. It's the only way to find us because we create adult content. All right. Do you want to get back into it? I have no idea how I'm going to flip this question. <laughs> I have a really random question for the resident Marvel expert in our patron chat right now. Well, actually, you're more of a DC person, right? <laughs> but, uh, okay, who is this? My kid got it in a Happy Meal today, and I know he's That's from the, the Avengers. Falcon. Captain I, America. Nope. It's it both. Is, I, it's, it's, okay. Both in the comics and eventually in the MCU, uh, Steve Rogers. I was gonna say, to, what about the Steve Rogers? <laughs> Steve Rogers has to temporarily retire as Captain America, and he gives the shield and the title to Sam Wilson. Okay, which is th that's who that is. The Falcon. So that's Falcon as Captain America. Falcon. Okay, so like, because I was like, I remember him from the movies with the wings, but I did not remember his name, and my kid kept asking me. He's like, I don't know. Sam Wilson. Sam Wilson. Okay, I'm gonna tell her after this. Yeah. Okay, thank um, you. Sorry. That was a tangent, I know. No, he it's good. I love in that yeah. suit at the end of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Such a good little mini series. I love that one. Oh, Falcon yeah, and awesome. the Winter Soldier was amazing. And also, uh Falcon, Sam Wilson is the guy that I talked about on the MCU about how he's like one of my uh all-time favorite characters because he's uh he's an army veteran who um his Thank you for turning off your fucking Mustang, dude. Um, <laughs> it's so loud. Like, my microphone picks it up. I have to edit out whenever he comes home. Anyways. Wow. Um, I'm going to a Camaro. But... No. Um, Sam Wilson is amazing because he holds a weekly meeting at the VA for people struggling uh, to re reincorporate. Whatever the world is like once you've ended, yeah, reintegration. Um, and he gets capped to go to therapy. And so Sam is out there promoting therapy every week and is helping veterans out. And I'm like, I love you for the simple fact of that. But then the fact that he also makes Bucky go to therapy. I saw uh, that on Cinema Therapy, like where they had to the, salt the spirit gaze or whatever. And they're, mm -hmm. they're like knee to knee. Yep. staring at each other. I yeah, their therapists it. really love to give them a hard time because they fight like an old so married couple. Good. So good. So good. Oh, yes. Plus okay. that show gave us the definition of the big three. Yep. Oh, so go watch uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think you'd like it. It's cute. Um... Also scary and terrifying and morally ambiguous in some areas. So good marvelness all the way around. Sounds like my cup of tea. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't think that we can really flip this topic on its head. Uh, where is the line of sexy versus toxic? I can't flip this one. So let's go with something else. Um. Yeah, I didn't really have an answer for the question anyway. I don't know if y'all have noticed. I've been surprisingly you've been pretty quiet. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I mean, you, I think you, yours you, was. Well, I mean, that night came up with one of the biggest ones that we've ever really covered <clears throat> covered on this show, and that was uh, Harley Quinn and Joker. Like, that is not a sexy relationship. It can be in some of their flirtatious moments and things like that. And in some iterations where, especially when it's really, when the cartoon series is really geared towards kids, it can be a fun and flirty type. But then it easily crosses over into toxic. Yeah, but Batman the Animated Series was 
uh, addressed to kids. And in that one, he shoved her out of a window. <laughs> right. But it's not like that 24-7 in some of the other more adult uh, rated um, Joker Quinn content that we have. Yeah, I, I didn't have an answer. I mean, the closest I came up with is something I discussed in chat, but I've, I've beat that horse to death. So, uh, Black Cat manipulating what's his face to think that they have a baby together. I mean, come on, Bat Knight, you've got these in your playbook. Yeah, I know, but see, see you didn't see me trying to trigger you by bringing up Geralt and uh, Yen, or I mean, not Yen, Triss. Tris, Geralt and Tris. <laughs> okay. No, well, I'm not a Tris mancer, so I wouldn't be triggered. I'm all fine not, with that. A, I've heard your opinion on that relationship. Geralt and Yen kind of suck together too, though. He's got no good options. Shawnee. Shawnee, Shawnee, yes. I forgot. We decided he should be with Shawnee. Yeah, yep. she's great. Or alone. He could be alone. Geralt yeah. should be with Dandelion. We all know this. Yes. No, I actually, when when... I was sitting here at the beginning of this episode trying uh, trying to think of an answer. Like, where's that line between sex? You know, that whole thing. I, I, I wanted to contribute, but my brain just kept going back to Felicia Hardy. And I'm like, I don't want to bring her up again. <laughs> I have to have more people to talk about. But, And that's, you know, my kryptonite as far as that whole fictional thing goes. I've discussed this on numerous occasions. I, I can't not be attracted to that woman, but she's the definition of sexy but toxic. I believe Poison Ivy is the actual literal definition of sexy and toxic. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> um, hmm. I love I forever have that to fall back on now. Yep. I can't wait for those episodes to start being released, um, which I heard is going to be uh, in December. And if you don't December know what we're talking what about, I was told. yeah, that uh, night and I are on an Avengers audio drama that will be coming out uh, just here in a few weeks. Excited about it. But neither of us are Avengers. We get no. rescued by Avengers. <laughs> hey, that's pretty awesome. Avengers. You threaten them? Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah, I just I just do a sarcastic quip after everything's done. Sounds about on brand. Yeah. Did you even have to act? <laughs> oh. Come I on, brains. Final, well, here's my final thought on this. Like, cause we we don't have to beat. Well, I don't want to like get Peta mad at me. I was gonna say don't have to beat this dead horse, but anyway. <laughs> My final thought about this is like, I don't know what the answer is. I know what I know to be, to feel right and not right, but it is art and it's good art because it's making us question these things and think about these things. Maybe not everyone. That, that was really my thought is like, what, is it fine if a lot of these, like if, if pop, pop culture wise, a lot of people I like idealize these bad relationships like what does that say about us as a culture like is that is that something to be worried about are are they okay in their relationships like i don't know um i mean i don't think that there's a problem with them existing in art in stories because they exist in real life too and and you know a lot of times people people sometimes get exposed to things only through some kind of art Otherwise, they wouldn't know it exists. So I think it's important to have all sorts of things represented in art. But I also think it's really important for people to have the critical thinking and literacy to understand the stories being told, how they're being told, to recognize when, yes, this is the story being told, but you shouldn't like it. It shouldn't be a good thing sometimes. You know, like everyone going crazy about Rhaenyra and her uncle getting married and House of the Dragon, the Game of Thrones spinoff show, prequel show. Gross. You know, but people really like that. Or, or me as a twin, my sister and I, 
we had to grow up with people like loving twin cest, like in especially in like um hentai graphic novels like manga and stuff. There was a lot of that in our high school that people really liked these twin romances. And obviously we both find it appalling. Cannot understand that at all. What? Like I can't date the both of you? That's so bullshit. Barfy. <laughs> so barfy. Don't get it. But it exists. People like it. I don't know. At what point does it just become a kink or like something that sh is, I don't know, you know? It's, I don't have the answers to these questions. I just know how I feel about these things. So I think that that might be the point that we wrap it up for tonight. There's definitely a level of sexy out there that can fall quickly into a level. Wow. I saw the the comment feed and it totally just like wiped my brain clean of any words. Sorry. Um, I don't think that I have much to add to that, V. So I think this is a good spot for us to wrap up the show for tonight. Uh, got anything that you guys want to shout out for tonight? That night, I know you got some cool stuff going on. Uh, yeah, okay. I um still doing the Twitch thing. Uh, last I checked, I was up to 72 followers. So again, slowly but surely, we're climbing. Ooh. Um, I tend to stream Sunday night, Monday night, and Wednesday night. Currently, the games I'm playing, Sunday is still Spider-Man 2. Uh, Wednesday has been RoboCop Rogue City. And then Monday, I actually decided to do uh, my first Renegade playthrough on Mass Effect. I just nice. started with the second one because, quite frankly, that's I – want, I want to romance Jack. That's the whole point of uh, to me about why I did this playthrough, so I started with the second game. Um, and I'm going to – yes, I'm playing Renegade, but I'm not going to do – I think you called it the Renafuck. I'm not yep. doing that one. Uh, no, we're, we're, I'm going to have – I'm going to build my, my ultimate power couple because I'm playing as a biotic too. So mm – -hmm. Uh, so yeah, Sundays, uh, Sundays, Mondays, and Wednesdays, this is the same spiel I give at the end of my streams. It's, uh, I usually shoot for 9 p.m. Eastern time, sometimes a little earlier, sometimes a little later, depending on when I can get my kids to bed. And, uh, you know, I tell everybody, anybody that follows me, I call them a fellow knight of the gaming table, and I wish everyone a great day and a night night. So. Oh, and since you know, Jen mentioned it on the last uh, episode, I'm also, I, I think we've already talked about it on this episode, but yes, I'm part of that audio drama with her as well. I get to get bossed around by Jen. <laughs> yep. Uh, thank you. And please make sure that you go follow daddy underscore bat night uh, on Twitch. Uh, show him some love from the girls. Muffiny, do you have anything going on? Things you want to shout out and plug? Um, I don't have anything to plug because all my social media is dedicated to my dog and how much I love him. But I just wanted to say I started my second playthrough on Baldur's Gate and I'm a gift Yankee Eldritch Knight and I'm romancing Lazelle and I'm having a great time. And I'm actually, my first playthrough, I think V's the same way, but we typically kind of play how we are as people. Like I kind of insert myself into the story, but this time I'm actually trying to like role play a character. And my gift Yankee, I named her Kachava after the protein powder because I thought it was hilarious. But <laughs> I also am making her kind of mean and it's really fun. I'm getting a completely different game. So it's very exciting. That's what I have going on in my life because <laughs> I have no children. <laughs> you do love that. You have a dog, and he requires a lot of attention and care. He is so my he is special a child. need boy. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you guys haven't played it as a GIF, my sister sent me a Snapchat. Like, you know the scene where Astarium's asking you to, like, describe how he looks because he can't see his reflection? And the GIF response is like, oh, I don't know, an elf, white hair, 5'11". Like, it's so, like, accurate and straightforward. It's so funny. I love it. Yeah, he got I upset about it. And then I told him that Lazel's prettier, but he's all right. And he actually approved and thought it was funny. <laughs> it wow. was awesome. 
I cannot wait until we start talking Baldur's Gate in 2024. Holy shit. <laughs> a couple um, weeks away now. I know, right? But we have amazing characters to wrap up the end of the show this year. Uh, please stay tuned next week for our amazing chat about one Dorian Pavis. Mm, can't wait. Can I bounce a quarter off of those things? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you shall see. If you like what you are hearing, please be sure to leave a review on iTunes or leave a comment on Spotify and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can now find me on the Cyberpunk Lorecast with my co-host, Toasty, where we explore the foundations of the past, the state of Night City today, and the news of the future for all things cyberpunk. And of course, in our Two Girls, One Ship channel on the Robots Radio Discord. Come give us a follow on all the social medias and on patreon.com slash two girls one ship. Our theme music was composed by the ever talented Pipe Man Studios and our artwork was designed by the esteemed Let's Not. Links are in the description. I wonder if we should add that one of our artworks was not Let's Not. <laughs> it was someone from Etsy, like Moon, Moon something studios. I can link it too. Anyway, I don't know. It's great. I'm also on the Robots Radio Discord and on our own Two Girls One Ship Discord server where we nerd out on all our favorite CGI significant others. Be sure to check out our live streams on Twitch on Fridays at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Our podcast episodes release on Mondays because you need at least one good thing on a Monday. So thanks for listening. And remember, beauty is in the eye of the controller. Which kind of proves my point about this whole episode. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. And stopping the recording. Oh, this is going to be a short episode tonight. I know, which is good so because... Paula wasn't here to fight me. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. No, like... Jen couldn't come up with a way to reverse the question. That's usually what we do, <laughs> what y'all do to stretch out time. Yeah. No, that's, that's very, very true. We have, as, we have more work to do this weekend than normal, so I'm fine with a shorter than normal episode. I didn't yeah, want to say this on the uh, you know recording, but honestly, as far as the whole toxic relationship things go, I have, we all, we all have that one in our past, uh, mine was so freaking bad that I try to avoid toxic relationships like the Goram plague, which is another reason why there's no, there's no element of like, as soon as I start realizing the toxicity, then I lose all interest in the mm -hmm. relationship. So from, from the, you know, fictional perspective, yeah. as far as real life, I've tended to live my life like a walking doormat, but you know, that's neither yeah. here nor there. I think it's same. <clears throat> I think the toxic tropes are they are found to be more sexy by people who are younger with less relationship experience, maybe, or people who yes. just are lucky. Because I mean, I remember being a teenager and everyone was like obsessed with the guy who was possessive and jealous and like very toxic. But then you get because older. That means and he loves you. Don't right. you see how much he's paying attention to her? I mean, it's, oh. the, it's the same thing V was saying earlier. It's just, you know, it translates. To, to the uninitiated, to the you know younger that don't know any better, that just toxicity translates into passion. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I see from that if you don't know the situation, but when you're in a relationship where it literally ends with like, you know, once every two weeks, you're having to go to, you know, Home Depot to like get more. It's like, I need two bathroom doors. And is this all the spackle you have? You know, like, yeah. that's not a yeah, good that's thing. that's a problem. <laughs> I was like, cute. that's the... That's the the lazy writing to me is to to move relationships forward, not just romantic relationships, but it plays a key part in romantic relationships too. It's like you need some kind of tension and friction, and it creates a lot of tension when y'all are fighting. But like that doesn't mean it's a good relationship. And it you just it's lazy because you don't have to develop your characters. You don't have to 
actually lay out a falling in love bit or a coming back together bit. Like you're just like, oh, they'll fight a makeup. It right. Anybody itself. besides me watch Smallville? I did, but yeah. not all of it. I don't remember. I'm in, I'm in one of the later seasons, and Oliver Queen has, has a previous relationship with uh, Tess Mercer. And there's one point where he's flirting with her. You know, he's like, come on, you know, there's always been a tension between us. And she looks at him with a, you know, like little evil smile or something and says, oh, there's tension, but it isn't sexual. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Man. Oh, okay. Closing down all the things. Yeah, best friend Eileen in the chat talking about how love triangles are exhausted. That's so true. Yes. I'm kind of tired yes, of seeing them everywhere. <laughs> I think the last time I saw a love triangle in something and thought it was cute was Hanakimi, the manga. <laughs> I was literally, I can't remember. I, I don't know if anyone even knows it. It was such a cute story. That was the last time where I, I, I yeah, <laughs> that was the last time I saw a love triangle trope and thought it was cute. That was oh, probably yeah. the first and only time. Y'all want to know what the best news was I got all week? Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, Spotify has added audiobooks to their uh, premium. Like, you can listen to audiobooks for free on premium. And apparently, all of the Witcher audiobooks are on Spotify premium. And I'm like, yeah! Because I own like four of them, but never have any time to sit down and read them. So yeah. no, I the Witcher books are really good. I started to read, you know, with the audiobooks. I started with the one that I knew was the last one I'd bought because I knew I hadn't, I hadn't finished that one. But I'm listening to it and I'm like, I don't remember this. Did I get it this far? So I went and started the second one, went and ran into the same freaking problem. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. And I started over with Last Wish. I'm like, all right, we're just going back to the Goran beginning. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. No. I love the Witcher books and the audio version is really good as well. Because that's how I read all of my books is through audio only. Um, so I, I fully support this. I also dig the fact that there's uh, apparently... A a couple of different options for the audiobooks for The Witcher. One of them is called uh, the Book Track Edition. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? So I looked up the description and apparently they have like accompanying music while the guy's mm -hmm. reading the story. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, dude, this would be awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not going full blown anime or full blown audio drama. It's just the one guy reading. So it is kind mm -hmm. of funny. I, I just got through with the story where he's, uh, Gerald's dealing with Renfrey. And mm -hmm. so there's that whole situation. And it's just, it is funny to hear him go from talking in Witcher voice to talking in Renfrey's voice. And it's like, yeah, okay. I get what you're going for there, dude. But yeah, we needed a we needed a female narrator there. Not always. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about audiobooks. Um, but I will not get into them tonight because I still need to eat dinner. Um what uh, what was I going to say, though? Oh, right. I could never get behind the uh, love triangle trope, no matter what form it took. I've never found one that works because the fact that my 14-year-old ass was uh, in high school and went, dude, I think you're really cute. But I also really still like this other guy. So I don't know what to do in this situation. Is it okay if I continue to date the both of you right now while I'm trying to figure out who I like? And it was a five-minute conversation that I had with the two guys that I was crushing on at the time. They looked at each other and was like, that doesn't make the us dating, right? And he's like, no, not at all. And I was like, cool. So I'll split my time evenly between the two of you, yeah? And they're like, yeah. So I'd hang out with one guy for be uh, classes before lunch, and then the other guy for the classes after lunch. So the fact that my 14-year-old ass could figure out how to have an adult conversation about the fact that I was attracted to more than one person at a time, why can't anybody else figure this out? And why is this whole thing even a trope? I, yeah, no. You I'll could always you go why. the Cyclops, Jean Grey, and Wolverine route in the oh more recent God, comics. 
Did y'all hear about that? I saw something on Reddit briefly. Yeah, they went full blown throuple. Mm hmm. So okay. <laughs> I mean, happy day for Gene, I guess. But I mean, that's essentially what I was in. <laughs> Except Cause... that, like now, Wolverine will throw like sideways play flirting at Cyclops. Huh. Yeah, Ew, I, I might have I to never... pick a comic book. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. No, my boyfriends did not end up dating each other. And for the record, somebody, uh, if the debate rages as to whether I'm more, whether or not I lean more toward DC or Marvel, no, I do both. You there go you both go. ways. There are, there are characters <laughs> in DC that I have loved longer, but Marvel has more variety of characters I like. So. Uh. Wonder Woman is my standalone favorite character of all time. She is DC, but there are definitely a lot more role models in Marvel that I appreciate and love more. But I will forever be a Wonder Woman stan. Well, my wife yeah. and I had the debate once. I, I tried to say that my favorite, I have a favorite DC and I have a favorite Marvel. And she's like, well, your favorite DC is Batman. I was like, no, my favorite DC is Green Arrow. And mm. she goes, but you have so much more Batman stuff than you have Green Arrow stuff. I'm like, yeah, because Batman stuff's easy to find. <laughs> Up until Green Arrow merch. Yeah, as, 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 as when the, the show yeah. was popular. Yeah. The yeah, okay. when the show was popular, you could find it everywhere. But before that, people didn't even know who he was. Yeah, I have to call it here. And V, I need you for like five minutes. So we are going to end the stream right here. Um, thank you, chat, for hanging out with us tonight. I saw a bunch of names flying by. Um, love you all. Why aren't you Daddy Green Arrow Knight? <laughs> okay, I can say this real quick faster than I can type. Uh, my oldest once upon a time uh, thought that her, or said that her daddy was Batman. And so I just ran with it. So mm, that's okay. why. It's a shout out to my kids. <laughs> All right. Good night, stream. Good night.